Antonio Vivaldi was born on March 4, 1678, in Venice. His father was a professional violinist, and his mother a daughter of the tailor. From the cradle, he suffered from a long ailment. Antonio, the eldest of six children, was taught violin by his father. Through his father, he met and learned from some of the finest musicians and composers in Venice. In 1693, he began studying to become a priest. He was ordained in 1703 and was soon nicknamed the Red Priest, referring to a family trait for red hair. However, his health issues prevented him from pursuing career as a priest, and he eventually turned to music as a full-time career. Same year, he became master of violin at an orphanage for girls called Ospedale della Pietà in Venice. Vivaldi was tasked with composing new works using various instruments and instructing the girls to play them and taught music theory. Under Vivaldi's tenure, the Pieter girls' concerts had become famous across Europe. Over the next 30 years, he composed most of his major works while working there. Vivaldi's first major work was his 12 concertos, published in 1711 and was a huge success. His own violin playing was an innovative and passionate as his compositions. His first opera, Ottone in Villa, was premiered in Vicenza in 1713. It was a great success. Vivaldi was also a capable businessman. He immediately plunged into an operatic activity in the twin roles of composer and impresario. Vivaldi became the music director of Pietà in 1716, and the 1720s were the zenith of his career. For about two years around 1720, he worked in Manchur as director of secular music for the city's governor, Prince Philip of hesse darmstadt The inspiration of the Four Seasons was probably the countryside of Manchur. They were published as the first four concertos in a collection of twelve in 1725. The first four concertos are now known as the Four Seasons. Spring was also a firm favorite of King Louis XV. And Vivaldi received various commissions for father compositions from the court at Versailles. He was popular among the nobles. In his 40s, he met a young vocalist, Anna Juro, who was around 16 at the time. She sang for the first time in his opera in 1726, accompanied on his many travels. Anna became his muse for the rest of his life. In 1728, he met Charles VI, Holy Roman Emperor, who was a great admirer of him. The Emperor gave him the title of Knight, a gold medal, and an invitation to Vienna. In the 1730s, his career gradually declined. Musical trends and tastes were shifting, like the hottest summer to a rainy autumn. He left for Vienna in 1740, but he found himself without a prominent patron following the death of Charles VI. 
Antonio Vivaldi died in poverty in Vienna on July 28, 1741. Vivaldi was buried in a simple grave. He was 63. After his death, his music suffered a century of neglect, except that greatly admired by and influenced Johann Sebastian Bach. 25 years after Vivaldi's death, Count Giacomo di Razzo acquired Vivaldi's manuscripts from the Pieta. His heirs kept them until the late 1920s. When the terms of the will were overthrown, the treasures came to light. They are now acquired by the Turin National University Library. Musicians and scholars revived his music. Alfredo Casella organized the Vivaldi's Week revival in 1939. An American violinist, Louis Kochman, was known for his lush performances on Hollywood scores including Gone with the Wind. He fell under the spell of Vivaldi's concerto approached to make a recording by Concert Hall Records, which specialized in popularizing lesser-known music. This performance took place at Carnegie Hall and recorded Vivaldi's The Four Seasons in 1947. And this best-selling recording began the transformation of the little-known Vivaldi into a worldwide sensation. His influence went far beyond his own lifetime. Vivaldi's music finally bloomed. Vivaldi's music was innovative. He wrote more than 500 concertos. Almost 800 pieces of music were written. In his lifetime, wholly aware of his own talent, he was said to be proud vain and quick to boast of his speed of composition, but at the same time possessed a zest and enthusiasm that earned the admiration of those who knew Vivaldi. A good observer, Charles de Bois, met Vivaldi in his late years and left these words. He's an old man who makes music curiously and prodigiously 